Hello YouTubers and welcome to another episode of The Golf Nerd. This is episode 2 of a 3 part series of reviews on hitting mats. Today I'll be reviewing the Fiberbilt Flight Deck Grass Series Hitting Mat. This product is available as a standalone product with a retail of $100 or as part of a Fiberbilt Practice Station with a retail of $500. It can be purchased directly from Fiberbilt or through other retailers such as Costco and Amazon. I'll provide links to both products below, but no, these are affiliate links and I'll receive a small commission if you purchase these items. This money will be used to reinvest into the channel, so I would certainly appreciate it if you used the links. I will note that the hitting mat portion is over 30% less expensive on Amazon. The Fiberbilt Practice Station is over 25% cheaper on Amazon than the Fiberbilt website. The hitting mat as a standalone product includes two adjustable tees, which are pretty expensive to replace at a cost of 20 bucks for two tees. I found you could cut off the included tee and use a martini tee in its place, and it worked really well. So this may be a more cost-effective option. Now, if you are looking for a budget setup, the Fiberbilt hitting mat by itself is definitely an option. I paid 60 bucks for the hitting mat by itself, but you would definitely need to build some sort of riser given its height. This leads me to the first negative for the hitting mat. Most mats are around the 1 inch to 1 and a quarter inch height. However, the Fiberbilt grass series measures at 1 and 3 quarter inches high. In my opinion, this is poorly thought out as it doesn't match what has apparently become an industry standard. In order to use it in my setup, I had to try and elevate my existing hitting mat surface by placing half inch EVA foam gym tiles under the mat to try and match the heights, and even then there was still a difference. The other concern I have over the size and shape is the oval shape of the mat and the plastic oval perimeter that surrounds the hitting surface. Many golfers have moved to a replaceable hitting strip in their practice areas, but Fiberbilt has made such a unique product that it really only works by itself or in combination with the optional practice station rubber mat. Perhaps this is intentional to force potential customers to use the optional rubber standing platform, but it seems to me all they really did was limit their potential customer base. In my situation, I used a miter saw to cut off portions of the plastic oval base to try and make it fit more practically, but this really didn't work all that well and I wouldn't recommend it. As a standalone mat, it can be secured to the floor with adhesive-backed Velcro, so there are options here for the budget-minded, but again, you'll have to match the unusual turf height with some type of platform to put the golfer and the hitting surface on the same elevation. Now, why would you want to go through all that trouble? Well, as I said, this is an affordable option, but that isn't the primary reason to consider this Fiberbilt product. Fiberbilt advertises the grass series as their most injury-free hitting surface. They claim that this product is as easy on your joints as anything available. As I mentioned in my Monster Mat review, which you can find on the channel, I am considerably sensitive to tennis elbow when practicing on artificial turf. The absolutely most redeeming feature of this grass series mat is I found the marketing claims to be true. I have used this product for several weeks and have had little to no joint pain, which for me is significant. The design of the turf is quite unique and this leads to why I believe it is so easy on the body. It looks like an extremely industrial set of broom bristles standing straight up. When you really dig in and take a divot, the club tends to hop off the surface. In my opinion, it's when a club gets stuck in a hitting mat surface that really aggravates joints and tendons. This is not the case with the Fiberbilt Grass Series, and if injury prevention is your primary concern, I would suggest that this should be on your short list of options to purchase. Now while the hitting surface is very unique, it has one significant drawback. When I take my address position behind a shot, I like to ground my club, align the face to the target, get into posture, and take my shot. The fiber-built surface introduces a very unstable surface to ground your club on. As a result, it's really difficult to align the club face and take your posture while maintaining this alignment. This is by far my biggest complaint for the product. I don't love the size and shape, 
but the inability to set up well to a shot is pretty much a deal breaker for me. It's okay for hybrids, woods, and driver, but it's really unstable with irons. Game improvement irons that present a thicker sole may not be as sensitive. My Mizuno Hot Metal Pros are very sensitive to the surface of the fiber built grass series and have what I would consider a medium thick sole. However, this concern could be very personal to me and it may not impact your enjoyment of the product at all. The last consideration is durability. Fiber built suggests this mat will last for hundreds of thousands of shots. Although I've only used the mat for a few weeks, I have no reason to believe that this is not the case. The bristles appear to be very sturdy and the base that Fiber Built has designed is well made. I suspect this mat would provide years and years of wear before needing replaced. So if durability is a concern, I would rate the product very highly. Ultimately, this product is not going to make the cut in my application, but I can certainly see how it would provide a low cost, injury-free solution for the golfer who's setting up their first indoor practice area or a golfer whose primary concern is injury prevention. I suppose hitting mats are like many other products, and to satisfy one element of a design, you have to compromise on other aspects of the same design. Fiber Built apparently prioritized injury prevention and sacrificed on user friendliness. This certainly seems the case to me anyway, as the Fiber Built Grass Series bristle design makes it so hard to stabilize an iron in a pre-shot routine, and the turf height is certainly not a standard height. Well that's it from the Golf Nerd. If you've tried this product or are currently using it, I'd love to hear how your thoughts compare with mine. So please leave a comment below about your experiences. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel to hear my thoughts on future product reviews. If you enjoyed this review, please hit that like button to let me know that I'm providing the type of content you're looking for. There is one more Hitting Mat product review upcoming, but until then, hit them long and straight, and I'll see you next time.